It's 2023 and it's time to make the switch to Gmail. If right now you're using Outlook for your emails and you want to make the switch to what everyone's buzzing about, which is Google Workspace and Gmail for your emails, well, this video is going to cover the exact steps you need to make from an IT professional so you don't get anything wrong. So why is there so much buzz around Google Workspace and using Gmail for your email? Well, gone are the days where we need to download emails from an email server and have them live on our computer, like we've been doing for many years with Outlook and with Mac Mail. You see, Google's online tools allow us to get everything done in the cloud, and Gmail is a great way of accessing your email online. Now, you may have been familiar with Gmail in the consumer edition, which allows you to have an at Gmail account for free, but it's very different to the business version of Gmail in Google Workspace. You see, with Workspace, which was formerly called G Suite, you can actually bring your own domain name. And when you connect that to Google's ecosystem, well, you can send and receive emails under your own business email address without having to use at gmail.com. And what that means is whether you're working with customers, suppliers, staff, or anyone that you need to do business with, they're going to see your professional domain name instead of an at gmail.com. But you get all of the benefits of working with Gmail online, including Google's powerful Google Workspace ecosystem, which goes far beyond just email. But this video is going to focus on the transition from an Outlook mailbox to a Gmail online mailbox and how to migrate your data between those services. If you're interested in setting up Google Workspace and you haven't already, well, we've got other guides and videos on the channel that cover that. Now, if you're still on the fence, here's some of the reasons why it's a good idea to make the switch. We are now in a cloud era and most apps run on the browser for good reason. It means that there's never anything to bother with updating on your local computer. It means that you've always got the most secure version of whatever system or platform that you're using. Now, Google's been working this way for many, many years, and it means that, well, they've built some pretty darn cool features into Gmail that now work with your business email account. Features like using AI to remind you when to follow up, as well as all of the integrations with the rest of the Google ecosystem. If you want to check your calendar, well, you can do that right from your email. If you want to drop a note or maybe check up on a task, well, that's there too, including communication with your team and the third-party apps you can install on Gmail are pretty much limitless. Now, if you're a business owner, you've probably got years or potentially even decades of email stored on your computer right now. The challenge is that, unfortunately, it can become so overwhelming to manage them, well, it just becomes something that people leave by the wayside. But we don't ever really want to delete all of that data because if a customer comes back to us in two or three years and says, hey, I want to sue you, well, you probably want to keep a record of every email you've sent and received. So we end up in this situation where our mailbox on our computer gets bigger and bigger and we need to find a time to make a switch. Let's get into how to make that happen. The first step is preparing for the transition. And what I like to do here is do a bit of an inventory. Have a look at how many emails you have in each one of your mailboxes to get a bit of an idea of how much data we're going to be moving. If you're savvy enough, you can even check the data file and see how large it is. And you'll get an idea of, okay, well, how much data do I need to upload? And maybe you can work out how long that might take based on your internet connection. Anytime I'm moving data, I like to be able to do a bit of a spot check once I'm done, just to make sure that the data transfer process has been successful. The next step is to set up Google Workspace. And there's other videos on our channel that go into more detail about how to manage setting up an account and what things to look out for. But the basic steps are to register with Google, set up your DNS settings and configure that so your mail will flow correctly. And once everything is verified, make sure you've got your credit card inserted in there so that when it comes time to pay for the account after your trial, well, you keep getting emails. If this is the first time setting up an account for you, it's probably a good time to set up two-factor authentication on your individual user account, especially if you're the super administrator. This will mean that your account has an additional layer of protection just in case someone manages to work out your username and password combination. So it's time to start transferring data. Now, here comes the point where I say, if you'd like some professional help with this, you can get in touch with our team. We manage these every single day for business owners all over the world. And if you're not the kind of techo person who likes doing this yourself, well, our team will be happy to help. Click the link below if you'd like a free consultation. Now, if you're going to go it alone, we're going to use the Google Workspace migration tool for Microsoft Outlook. And that's going to help us upload the data from our Outlook mailbox over into Gmail. Now, the setup is pretty straightforward. You need to sign in, follow the wizard, and it's going to give you some prompts on how to do it. If you're worried about how much data you have and you may need to migrate across multiple sessions, well, it might be a good idea for you to first migrate your calendar events and then your contacts and do the email in batches. You can choose different dates where you'd like to upload the email from. And remember that some emails may still be arriving in your inbox as you're going through this migration process. You can run an additional migration 
to clean up those emails after the first migration is finished. If you're wondering how much data you should migrate, well, my recommendation is to upload all of your data and your complete history into the Google ecosystem. What this means is it's then available to access via your mobile phone if you ever need to access a historical email, and it's all effectively saved and secured inside Google's ecosystem. Once the migration is finished, well, now it's time to switch your DNS records so you have your new emails arriving in the Google ecosystem. And there's going to be a few things for you to get used to now that you're using Gmail instead of Outlook. Some basic things like folders become labels. They're mostly just a name change, but you can have an email that lives in multiple labels. So think of labels more like tags and less than like folders. The other cool thing is if you set up a rule in Gmail that's called a filter, well, it'll automatically run those filters in the cloud before an email even lands in your inbox. So if you wanna have an email skip your inbox and automatically land in one of your labels, well, you can do that in the Gmail settings. Google search is the most powerful part of your new Gmail inbox. You can try searching for an email from five or even 10 years ago, and you'll be able to find it pretty quickly. Getting used to the search is going to be one of your best friends now you've made the switch to Gmail. And if you need any help learning how to do more advanced searches, well, you can click on to the advanced search button up at the top of the search bar, and that will let you add additional search parameters. Google also provide complimentary limited support to their Google Workspace subscribers. You can find the Google Help area for access to that. If you're new to the Google Workspace ecosystem, make sure you take a look around the channel and you'll find lots of videos on how to get more out of the platform. And if you're interested in learning more or getting some help with the setup, well, you can click the link down below. We offer a free consultation to entrepreneurs and business owners for help with Google Workspace. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack, or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.